Okay, so this is the fourth and slightly better uh, twitching expression we can apply to a layer, any layer really, so let's apply it to this. Call up the position by hitting P, Alt click on the stopwatch here to type something in, and if you've been following along, we've been building more complex things every time, and so this one will be no exception as we'll be using variables and sliders and all sorts of cool stuff. So let's get set up. First off, let's add a slider control to this layer. And we're going to call this the amplitude. OK. And uh, what that means is we're going to be using this to control how far left or right this thing moves. We're only going to be moving it on the X. We want to separate these values out, so let's get into it. So, we're going to be creating an expression, and first let's call up some variables. So, let's say first off the bat, amplitude A equals whatever this slider says, and then uh, semicolon, and uh, we are going to be having uh, the X uh, X left and right uh, is going to be value uh, zero, so whatever value the layer is at, and then uh, plus a random number that goes from negative A to A. So negative whatever this number is to positive whatever this number is is how much will be added to or subtracted from, in the case of negatives, the x value every frame. So, simple enough. And the y will equal value and just the value that it is. And uh, make sure at the end of these to have your semicolons in there. And then say at the end, output the array x comma y and call it a day. So, what this means is basically we have a variable that is now controlling what's going on here and we really only have to change one thing to make this more or less go if we want this at a hundred points you know randomly happening it's at a hundred points and then we can keyframe this slider as much as we would like you know getting worse you know, getting less, all that fun stuff. We could even apply an expression to this slider that will cause it to wiggle as well. You know, we could we could do that if we so desire. You know, we could do all sorts of cool stuff now because by changing only one thing, we will affect a bunch of other things, and that's really the power of expressions is that. We will minimize our inputs to maximize the amount of things happening. So always remember that when you're writing expressions that you want to try to maximize the number of things that happen with the fewest inputs going in. Uh, the ideal expressions require almost no input. It's just the expression and then it does fancy wacky things all over the place. But the big thing is that we are using this slider, you know, which you know doesn't necessarily have to have keyframes. We could do something like, uh, I don't know, uh, wiggle, uh, change about um, 10 times a second and change by a value of 10. And then we can see that, you know, so it's going plus or minus a bunch. And it's kind of causing that jittering, sometimes still, sometimes jittering effect. So we have almost completed the entire thing here. We're more than halfway along. There's only two better versions of this stuff. Uh, and it involves some if-thans. So we've got variables. We've got variables tied into inputs. And uh, we're setting up multiple layers with multiple expressions acting on each other. But when you really get into the if-than or if, you know, things in expressions, that's where it's really at. So click ahead to the fifth 
and uh, slightly better than the fourth thing, and let's uh, get that on. I'm Evan Abrams. Thanks for watching. Enjoy this whole series. Uh, hopefully it builds up a good base for expressions. This is all really just a primer for your expression writing knowledge, and uh, subscribe to the channel if this is the kind of thing you want to learn, you want to get into, and uh, thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, tuning up, and uh, I'll see you around the internet. Thanks.